Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I live on the outskirts of Montreal. I study in ufology. I love astronomy also. I also study in astronomy. I have a 14-inch telescope, regular cameras, 2,000 millimeters plus, plus I have infrared cameras. Always investing in something bigger as I go along. More infrared cameras are coming, Gen 3, um, real Gen 3. You know, you could have a Gen 3, Gen 2, Gen 1 without actually being able to capture anything, right? I mean, it, it's awesome to have a Gen 3, but don't forget if you're going to pay ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and you can't catch anything in the sky, well, you got to be sure that you get things in the sky. And I'll be looking into that. Right, I want to talk about the magnetic field. We know the Earth has a magnetosphere. Well, what about the moon? Before we get into the sunspots of today, a new sunspot region on the sun the past three days. It's called the Genesis sunspots. And we're, we're going to go see that right after this. Magnetic fields on the moon. Is there a magnetic field on the moon? Apparently not. And a basic reason why is the magnetic field on the moon is very weak in comparison to that of the earth. And again, this is just what they're saying. The major difference is the moon does not have a dipolar. This is simple enough to understand. A dipolar magnetic field currently as would be generated by a geodynamo in its core. So like the little toys, not hard to understand, that you spin atop, um, you know, to have a magnetic, a magnetosphere, so they say. Um, so that magnetization present is varied. And its origin is almost entirely crustal in location. I know I spoke to you before about uh, some of the mares. They are very dense. And satellites can't even go over those regions because they will be pulled down into orbit. So they don't know much about the magnetosphere. Um, the plasma sheet is a very dynamic structure in a constant state of motion. So as the moon orbits through... Uh, magneto tail they say the plasma sheet can sweep across it many times with encounters lasting anywhere from minutes to hours or even days so what is this that we're looking at right the lunar wave or the lunar ripple i believe it's crow that gave it the term lunar wave if i'm not mistaken um i've never seen anyone else uh, post it um this could create a temporary nighttime atmosphere of dust. Here's a good one. Um, the moon comes when it comes in contact with a gigantic plasma sheet of hot charged particles trapped in the tail, which, you know, the magneto tail. The lightest and most mobile of these particles, electrons, pepper the moon's surface and give the moon a negative charge. What about the interaction between the moon and the Earth's magnetosphere? That's an interesting one. Just want to share this. There's the house. We can make some cool images with the polarized lenses, right, over the cameras when you're filming the sun. So this, I was just putting the filter on. It's not completely on. Actually, there's light coming in. That's why you see the spots. No, they're not planets. <laughs> Look at the square door, right, where the sun's coming out. Pretty trippy, eh? You can just see that square there. We often see shapes, pareidolia or not. Listen, I'm just sharing it. I'm not saying there's a giant cloud square in the sky, but there is. <laughs> we can see it there. Pretty cool. Sometimes natural phenomena occurs, but it still can be beautiful, and it's also very fun to talk about. Ladies and gents, whether you believe me or not, I saw for the first time in my life um, a meteor asteroid come uh, lower than I've ever seen before, 50 feet over the house. A second one entered the atmosphere, and here's the problem. It was going straight across like a plane, and it was going up and down, weaving up and down like a tadpole in water, and it was absolutely incredible. Very similar to uh, this object here, except it was very egg-shaped. Uh, it was like, you know, uh, literally egg-shaped. It was more pointy. The nose was more pointy. It was like that. I like this one finished. And listen, I've never seen that in my life come down out of the sky. It's absolutely incredible. And again, they're talking about fireball, fireballs for August 27th today. I believe tonight, ladies and gents, is going to be my most amazing night for infrared captures. I will be outside. I worked hard on this video and the next one that's coming for you all. There's some plasma leaving the sun. Thanks for watching, everyone.
Now, let's get something interesting up. I've been seeing the sun flash. Pretty incredible to see it flash the way it flashes. And if it's not someone sending me a Morse code message, we'd have to assume scientifically it could be something else. And how <laughs> wouldn't we have to? Blinkers on the sun, have you uh, heard of this before? A British-led team of astronomers um, had a while, a while, while back discovered a new phenomenon on the sun at that time. Uh, Short-lived explosions, and they are called blinkers. They are each the size of Earth, dubbed blinkers. Each explosion has the power of 100 megatons, equivalent to nearly seven large hydrogen bombs every time a blinker activates itself. So what exactly is a blinker and what do people mean when we talk about the blinking sun? It's covered in thousands of tiny hot spots. According to new observations from the solar and heliospheric observatory. So we're talking about, yes, the SOHO satellite, always. These hot spots, as will be reported in solar physics, may shed light on two questions facing solar science. The fantastically high temperatures of the sun's atmosphere and the source of the stream of charged particles called solar wind. When viewed in extreme ultraviolet light, the sun's surface looks dimpled like an orange, like you see here. The pattern results from the convection of hot gases, which wells up, cools, and sinks back below the surface. The intense heat rips apart atoms, creating charged particles that generate magnetic fields as they move. The sun is a magnetic star. As these magnetic fields emerge through the sun's visible surface, which is the photosphere, they will form sunspots and other active regions and create very complex and dynamic plasma structures inside of the sun's upper atmosphere, which is known as the corona. So let's go and see those magnetic field lines. So it started off on the bottom. You can see there, this is AR 2860. I'll get some numbers up for you. And 2859, a bit higher up, more in the center. You will see the magnetic lines, you could probably already see them now, depending on if you have a phone or not. Let's get a little bit of information, basic information. Ain't going to talk about radio flux and correlation and all the things that scientists use. We're going to try to keep it interesting. So 2859, 2860. On the bottom, you're looking at a new region, a new sun region, 70,000 kilometers long. To give you an idea, between those two planet-sized uh, uh, flares, spots that you see on the surface. It's absolutely incredible. Another um, flare, fl more flares there, more flares uh, there, here a flare, there a flare, everywhere a flare, flare, <laughs> as they're starting up. There, look, check it out, guys and gals, the magnetic lines on top. I want you to see um, personally what they mean. That's all I'm here to do. Just try to understand space myself and um, for some, if you already know what I'm showing you, well, forgive me, but it's interesting for me to be able to explain the things that I'm filming in space because sometimes, um, always, actually, theories are always fun to add, but it is sort of fun to have a basic information sometimes of exactly what we're looking at. I got this up, a short video on the members to show them. This is yesterday's uh, flaring. So that was an, as of day three yesterday, 360 kilometers an hour, uh, per second, by the way, not an hour. 360 kilometers per second are, were, registered the solar winds when uh, this AR2860 on the bottom be began. We see a cool plane going by, which by the way, I don't get very many large planes here. They're offset to me, but those are smaller planes. Sometimes they go by. I know most of the people that are in them. It's all people from around here. So I hope you enjoyed uh, yesterday's uh, flaring. There's uh, warnings for fireballs, coronal mass ejections today also on the sun. It's supposed to be a lot of activity. So um, right after the stream, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing is filming the sun once again for you all. Maybe we'll see some more surprises. Thanks so much, everyone.
up there on the moon They may be even coming right here soon Aliens are mounted on the moon Yes, they are up there Doesn't matter cause disclosure's coming soon Disclosure's coming 